hello guys and welcome back to my channel today i wanted to quickly share a story that i've actually never shared on my channel i i was talking with a friend recently and the whole memory just came back and i thought to myself it would be a nice idea for me to come here and just share this story of, of my life yeah. yeah i'm just gonna share a story of a time when i was arrested by my dad yeah i was arrested and locked up by my dad so i'm gonna go straight into the story i'm gonna try to make it not too long so when I was 17, I just finished secondary school and in those days I used to go to my father's shop every single day because I just finished all my exams, we're just waiting for the results and we're just kind of waiting, like you know the time you're waiting, like you kind of summer break kind of a thing and this was in Nigeria, right? Oh, to start with, to describe my dad, my dad was a pure authoritarian, like everything he said goes like you don't question it you don't ask him why you don't you just don't question it everything he said was yay and amen that wouldn't be unusual a lot of nigerian household would have been like that because it was summer break there wasn't much happening so i used to go to my father's shop my father owned two shops so i used to go and help out in the shops uh, like just like a sales girl kind of a thing so on this day i was um father left earlier in the morning i got ready and you know later on later on and i i was going to the shop and i took a bus i was on the bus i sat down those that those of you that grew up in nigeria if you if you know like uh the mini bus is not like the big buses like the mulwares or no this is just a regular bus normally there'll be driver and two seats by the side so i went into the middle seat and then there was another passenger here you know by my side so the driver was on to my left and there's this young guy on my right and i was in the middle so and the bus was going and this passenger was like saying to me oh um he kind of said hello i can't remember how it went this is long time ago i'm talking about well i'm 40 now so i was 17 then so that was like 23 years ago so i can't remember every single tiny detail so and this guy sitting by my side was said i can't remember how the conversation started but he said something like um are you born again uh, and he was like you know and you born again if you die today would you go to heaven you know stuff like that i can't remember exactly but i think something around that he then gave me he told me about his their church and he invited me to their church and said anytime where do you live i said oh yeah he said the church is actually near you he said i'll invite you to the church anytime you can like attend this church and you know you know something around that like invited me to the church and honestly all my life i've always been a church girl when i say church girl i went to church I, I i grew up in a catholic home and from day one from the catechism class and all of that they already put the fear of god in you like i knew okay there's a heaven there's a hell so i've always kind of been a church girl i've always wanted to like you know i used to say my hail marys and all the prayers and everything i was so dedicated like you know all my life and i always had the fear of doing the wrong thing and missing heaven and you know so after this guy spoke to me in the bus i thought to myself yeah i'll visit the church and find out like i wanted to visit the church and and i went to the church and i saw a lot of young girls and boys like myself and i saw how you know they were into church and they were into their faith and i i i was very curious and interested and I had just finished secondary school. I was never, you know, I had a very simple life all my life. We only went to the church, we only went to school and back, church and back, and then my father's shop and back. That was it. We had nothing outside that. That was our lives. When I went to the church, I think the first thing that got me would be like seeing a lot of people my age. You, it was very like a socializing kind of environment. I just loved the idea of being around a lot of people around my age. And I enjoyed going to the church. There was so much singing and clapping. And you know, uh, you see, I have been Catholic all my life. Then to go to a church where they are clapping and dancing and celebrating, I really liked it. I really, really did like it. And I was like, oh, I really like this. And slowly I became more into finding out more, trying to know more about what you know it's all about some other things that got me was when they start explaining why we shouldn't pray to mary because it's not in the bible we should pray to mary now now this video is not a video to preach to you as to what to do or whatever i just want to share my story so i don't want it's not if i was to start talking about to preach to mary or not that's another story altogether i just wanted to talk about what happened in my life then so yeah so i kind of 
wanted to know more i got more into it and i became really interested and before i knew it i didn't want to go to the catholic church anymore because i was convinced that no the catholic church is not the right way because nowhere in the bible did anybody pray to mary or anybody say you know the hail marys or say their rosaries so i just kind of didn't want to be in the catholic church anymore i just felt that like the catholic church was the wrong place for me and i felt that like if i stay in the catholic church i wasn't going to make it into heaven i was like this is the right way because you know they preached directly from the bible they were not really adding or subtracting from what the bible said so i became really really like into it like really really into it and before i knew it i gave my life to christ and i was like oh this is what i want to do i want to be a born again christian but when i go home i was in trouble with my dad because i wasn't going to the catholic church anymore and my dad was making my life my life hell like really hell and this is me who grew up in a house where we were terrified of our dad like our dad was not you know the way you'd be like oh my parent like you know the way sometimes your parents can be your friend or it never happened in my house like my father was just this big boss like he was the authoritarian everything he said went and you know all of a sudden i found my place where myself in a position where i i just knew i had to disobey him because he wanted me to be catholic but i didn't want to be catholic anymore the urge to stay not catholic was too strong that my fear of my dad was there on one side but i felt like no i can't let this distract me i was like i'm going to heaven i'm doing the right thing like i'm serving god according to what the bible says and i was like like i, I didn't want the fear of my dad to make me miss heaven so i always went for that evening service i went I didn't want to miss anything i was like this born again christian and i wasn't going to catholic church anymore and my father was like you know my father was putting his foot down you're not going to go to that church and i would go and we started having problems like big 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 problems he wasn't even talking to me anymore the nigerian culture you have to listen good morning to your dad when you wake up in the morning uh it's not hello or hi no you don't say oh hello dad hi dad no we don't say that and he say good morning to my dad like in the morning he just walked past me he wouldn't even like acknowledge me and he just stopped talking to me so uh life became unbearable at home i was just it wasn't home anymore it just wasn't home anymore and on this day i was sleeping in the morning and i just heard like that like somebody just tapped me like that and i woke up and the first thing i saw was a gun this is like five in the morning the first thing i saw was a gun it wasn't pointing at me it was kind of hanging over the shoulder kind of thing and i opened my eyes and i saw two police officers yeah and my dad two police officers and my dad i was like whoa like i was confused i was 17 17 yeah i was confused like what are they doing but because i know my dad i knew could like i wasn't surprised because my father i don't know he was so stubborn so stubborn so i got up i actually didn't say anything i was just waking up at first i didn't ask any questions i just kind of like i don't know i can't remember if i changed my clothes i can't remember what happened but i remember walking out of the house with them and we walked out and we walked up to the front garden and i and i thought to myself well, i'm just going where am i going with them like what is going on like i didn't ask any questions at first but this time i was like excuse me officers like what have i done what's my crime and uh, as soon as I said that, all, uh, as soon as I said that, I just felt a massive slap on my face. And I just, you know that kind of a slap that all you see is stars. A slap on my face. My dad slapped me. And uh, he was like, shut up. I couldn't even say another word. I just went with him. Um, I remember my younger brothers were kind of like upset. They weren't really crying, but they were kind of upset and stuff like that. And I went in with them, we got into the car. My father drove. They didn't drive to the house. My father brought them to the house and he drove the two officers and myself to the station. We got to the police station. I've never in my life had any trouble with the police ever. I was only 17. I never ever had a problem with police. Never been at a police station or stuff like that. You know, the police station is like... I was actually sitting like the police station like they have a desk i was sitting like behind the desk and behind me then were um what's it called there were like some guys that were locked in a what they call a cell and i was there several two year old at the police station 
and I was held at the police station and my father went home he had a conversation with them and he went home I don't know at this point I think I became so strong and like my heart was hardened like I was like okay what else is my father gonna do like this is the worst he could have done do you know I think he put that he put me there to teach me a lesson you know to beat the bone again out of me kind of thing like I think he was trying to do whatever he could do to stop me being born again basically I was there till like five in the evening uh, then my father came back <laughs> and then my father came back I used to like laughing so yeah I was there till the evening and my father came back in the evening the, while all this is going on I haven't had any breakfast no lunch nothing nothing to eat nothing to drink uh, later on in the evening my uh, my father came back around five or something like that four or five in the evening he came back and came and he kind of took them and they went to the side and they started having he was talking with them i have no clue what they were talking about after he spoke with them kind of like you would tell they didn't want me to hear what they were saying my father was kind of whispering with them they went a bit to the side and they had a conversation and then, then they came and i was like okay what are they coming to do and they were coming to me and i was like thinking to myself okay what are they coming to do and the next thing i felt was like oh my god like slap from here and slap from there and slap from there and yeah uh were three of them and my dad and they're just beating me up and um yeah so oh my god i don't want to cry about this night it's making me emotional <laughs> when they were done i felt pain when i say pain i felt pain all over like i was in so much pain but at this time my heart just hardened i like my heart just hardened i was just so um angry i wasn't even crying but i was just angry because i knew i had not done anything wrong there was no reason for me to be at the police station um i didn't commit any crime they took me there because my father paid them to take me there but i think he needs in his own mind he thought he could teach me a lesson that way and uh, when they were done my face was swollen i had bruises and everything and i just thought to myself well this is the worst what else is he gonna do and the funny thing is i got in the car with my dad and went home yeah as far as i was concerned right because i became born again and you hear about persecution and how you're gonna go through these trials and tribulations as far as i was concerned that was my trial and tribulation that was my test to show if i was going to hold on to this fate i woke up the next day and continued going to church within a few days he said to me do you know what i'm done with you he said get out yeah he was like i'm done he said get out and and i left so i left home at the age of 17 and i never went back so yeah, I wanted to just share this story about the time my father got me arrested and beaten up by the police. Yeah, so that's my story. I never went, I actually never went back to the Catholic Church. Yeah, no, I, I don't see me ever going back to the Catholic Church. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's goodbye friends and goodbye folks.